Hey guys, Nixie here. Over the last week, I've had the pleasure of playing the Wanderer's Closed Beta Test. And now, after somewhere around 60 hours of playtime, after completing everything there is currently to do in the game, and sinking hours upon hours into PvP, I'd like to present an honest, in-depth review from my perspective. I'd like to start off by acknowledging that not everything in this review will be positive. I have some harsh criticisms of the game as well, but I'd like to begin with the most positive aspects and work my way down from there. I would say everything from gameplay to customization could use a bit of work, some more than others, but overall the game is fun, it's playable, and it is a good start. First and foremost, let's go over each character. Everyone starts the game with Alice, but due to the way the list is in-game, I'll be starting at Alibaba, a dual dagger assassin. Next up you have Robin, your typical archer in most MMOs, Oz, the Mage of Wanderers, Alice, your typical greatsword Beyblade tank, Scarlet the Gunner, Snow, a near invincible tank with a giant hammer, and Odile, a stylish rapier user that can toggle between melee and ranged combat at will. Along with characters, I'd like to touch on customization. Good customization is always a big thing for me in games, as I like being able to make my character as personal as possible. I would have to say this game surely delivers, with great costumes and the ability to dye them to the colors you want. Anyone can make their character truly unique, even if we're all working off of the same base model. Each character feels very unique, both in looks and personality. For example, playing a character like Scarlet doesn't just feel like I'm playing Alice with a gun. Appearance and personality of the characters themselves give a clear divide between each other. In addition to dyes and costumes, you have accessories, which can be obtained in various ways, either through leveling up friendship with a character, crafting, or earning them from things like the Wonder Pass or Level Up Pass. While the game does have a wide variety of accessories, a lot of them end up just being recolors of already existing models, which, while in essence is a good idea to give options, it can also feel a bit lazy at times, especially when we have the dying system, as some of them are just too bland to really feel different. Wanderers also features a mount and pet system. While mounts are strictly for movement and the racing minigame, pets include both passive skills as well as stats for your character. Again, most pets are a recolor of other existing pets, but at least they boast different stats and passives than one another. Pets range in rarity from rare to legend to hero, with hero being the best pets currently available in the game. Pets can be acquired in two main ways. Primarily, you can unlock all rare and legend pets from the glitch dungeon vendor, with hero pets coming from the pet gotcha. Mounts, on the other hand, are all acquired through either the in-game cash shop or crafting, depending on which mounts you're interested in acquiring. I will come back to the glitch dungeon in a moment, but first I'd like to address the crafting, gathering, farming, and trading systems of the game. While these systems may feel a tad bit basic, they do their job well of feeling moderately rewarding for the effort put in. Most materials can be gathered from your three different passive generators, the farm, ranch, and mine, all of which can be collected right from the central area of Wonder City. Some materials are exclusive to trading, where you send off materials from your generators and in return get rare materials from each of the three regions. Lastly, there are materials that can only be gathered. Some examples are fresh cream from the cakes at Queen of Hearts Castle, blueberries from yellow trees or berry bushes, and sulfur from the yellow mining nodes at Frozen Castle.
Crafting allows you to make a variety of items from accessory gotchas to mounts to hero gifts for raising friendship levels. Overall, I'd say the crafting system is bare bones at best, but still decently satisfying enough that it's still something I work towards. Now I know we've been focusing mostly on the smaller game systems and things of the sort, and there is a lot more to the gameplay than just these, but I'd first like to give a brief overview of the different mini-game modes before moving on to Glitch Dungeon and PvP. Wonders currently features five mini-game modes, Miracle Rush, Evergrowing Beansprout, Genius, Maze, and Dice Field. Two of the five minigames are player versus player, while the other three are self-driven. Starting off the player vs player minigames, we have Miracle Rush. Miracle Rush is a simplified racing game. You have three main controls, WASD to move and turn, Shift to drift, and Spacebar to jump. All of these are touch buttons for the mobile players. The goal is simple, be the first to reach the end of the track. There are speed boost gates all around the course as well, allowing for skilled players to get a huge lead over the competition, or those in the back to catch up to the rest of the group. Dice Field is a slightly more complicated game, where players go head to head with one another to compete for either the most tiles controlled or to eliminate their opponent with damage. You take turns rolling dice to see how many spaces you can move, then collect items on your path and ultimately try to land either parallel to your opponent if you're a melee character or diagonally if you're a ranged one to deal damage. Players have 20 turns that are shared between each other to complete either of these two objectives, at which point the game will be decided by whoever owns the most tiles, regardless of current health. Genius is a simple true or false minigame using trivia questions from the game itself. Maze, as it's called, is a maze to explore, boasting gifts such as gacha tickets, pet gifts, and gems. You can collect three gifts from the maze per day. The only thing I'd like to see changed is if the maze was randomly generated each day, since currently it's always the same route no matter what. Evergrowing Bean Sprout is a simple minigame where you're trying to cut down as much of the sprout as possible without getting squashed by a leaf. Players compete for a leaderboard spot by achieving the highest score in the allotted 60 seconds. At this point, it's about time we dig into the bigger game modes of Wanderers, being Glitch Dungeon and PvP. These two modes are where the majority of my criticisms for the game lie, but we'll start with an overview first. In Glitch Dungeon, players will play through a randomly selected series of rooms on a route of your choosing each one being progressively harder than the last, until you finally reach the end boss of the dungeon. Along the way, you will collect artifacts, level up, and collect elemental weapons to help you complete the dungeon. Each attempt will reward you with memory cards that can be used at the Glitch Dungeon vendor to unlock permanent buffs for your Glitch Dungeon runs. These range anywhere from health and damage to discounts and HP potions. Artifacts are like your usual items in a roguelike game. They give you base stats and set bonuses for collecting multiple from one set, some being better than others. Looking at you, suspicious mass. When leveling up inside the glitch dungeon, you'll be offered three randomly selected perks to choose from, allowing you to tailor your build specifically to yourself 
and ultimately create builds like this. This is where my first complaint lies. Artifacts feel like a second thought to the game when compared to perks. Perks alone are enough to absolutely decimate a run, and artifacts really just trivialize the whole thing when added on top of a good build. Your first run or two will feel difficult as you learn the mechanics and possible good builds. Bandersnatch will take a life or two, but then it'll just kinda work, and from then on Glitch Dungeon will feel like a joke to you. When reaching the boss of the second glitch dungeon, Frozen Castle, I was preparing for a much harder time, but was met with a boss that died to me in 7 seconds. 7 seconds. For a boss that should have been harder than the first one. Difficulty scaling really feels like it needs some adjustment, or we need a hard mode version of the dungeons to truly challenge ourselves because currently Glitch Dungeon is a quick and easy way to just burn time away with no real reward. Overall, I would say Glitch Dungeon is fun, for the first about 20 runs of it, but once you've been forced to do it over and over again by the in-game quests which only let you clear one step each run, needing a total of 16 steps for each quest, it becomes very boring and repetitive. At launch, I plan to only complete quests up until character unlocks, and then move on. Lastly, we're going to take a look at PvP. Player vs Player is split into two primary modes, a 4 vs 4 team mode called Gold Clash, and a 4 person free for all, Gold Smash. Unfortunately, I was never able to get a match for Gold Smash so we won't be taking a look at the free-for-all mode, but I have sunk somewhere around 100 plus games into Gold Clash. The mode itself is fairly simple, 4 vs 4 deathmatch while collecting coins to win the game. First player to 9999 gets a crown, if they hold it for 10 seconds, they win the game. I want to start this by saying I find the mode fun, I do get enjoyment from playing it, However, this mode has some horrible design flaws, and character balance is inadequate to say the least. Focusing still on the mechanics of the mode, you collect coins which allow you to purchase artifacts and elemental weapons, while working your way to victory. Artifacts are randomly selected each game, and the shop can be refreshed for 250 coins, or once for free each death you take. Elemental weapons can be purchased from the altars at each of the four corners, costing 300 for a random weapon, or 500 for a specific element or to upgrade your current element. Additionally, there are item spawns around the map that help you win the game as well. From the balloon sword to the pogo stick, each has its own unique effect that assists in either surviving or defeating your opponents. While most characters can make good use of a majority of their elemental options, there's definitely a few standout elemental weapons that just make you question the game's balance at times. I'm going to get into a couple examples to hopefully show some of these issues. Starting off, I'll go with a comparison between Fire Ali and Earth Alice. Fire Ali has this really long startup for, well, mediocre damage at best when compared to something like Earth Alice having a giant AoE, being nearly instant, and having the, the ability to straight up one-shot players on a tank that you really can't kill, which of course we'll get into that in just a moment. That is just one comparison of many that can be made, however I don't have much footage for others, so I'll be skipping over those for now. This shows a glaring issue in the way that weapons are balanced. Why is something with a small AoE and minimal damage so much slower than one with a huge AoE and massive damage? Another good example of elemental weapon balance would be between Fire Oz and Wind Oz. Fire Oz is meteor, takes so long to actually come down and hit, 
that players can just dodge out of the way without even really thinking about it. Simply walking will be enough to get away from it. Whereas Wind Oz, well, where do I even begin with that? A half second startup for an attack that hits extremely far away from him allows full range movement. He can dodge to quickly move it on top of you. It applies elemental bubbles that he can then explode with his Q and is one of the best elements in the game for the airborne reaction, all while having one of the lowest cooldowns of all elemental skills in the game. This may sound like targeted hate, which it definitely is as an Ali main, but at the same time it is a kind of ridiculous ability that Oz players get access to. Most characters have something that feels overpowered on them, but then you see Snow or Alice and just rethink everything because truly, those two will make you want to quit playing. Between Alice being strictly unkillable at times for the 3 second passive, and Snow just seeming to take damage but her health bar never goes down, it really can make you feel like not playing for the rest of that day once you've encountered it. Even Robin, with his water and electric synergy for a stun, isn't nearly as ridiculous as Invincible Alice laughing over your corpse. Ultimately, I think the PvP has potential. The combat system is fun, but perks need to have different effects in Glitch Dungeon than they do in PvP. They simply cannot be the exact same, otherwise you're going to run in into issues like this. When perks are designed to be able to defeat the bosses in Glitch Dungeon, they can't work the same in PvP, or else you end up massively overtuned. The game is incredibly fun when you make good plays, but when you run into the imbalance messes, it can really kill your vibe. Overall, I would give Wonder as a 6 out of 10 currently. The game is fun, but gets stale quickly. The player base is lacking even for a closed beta test, which, with the game being accessible to anyone, I can't even really call it a CBT. It's not really being advertised, and isn't available on Steam or Epic, requiring you to actually go to the website to launch the game or access it in the first place, which leads to reduced interest in the game. I think with a bulk up in player count, and some refinement in game balance, this could be a game that nets a good, consistent player base and has some fun competition. Sadly, I'm not sure if we will see that come to fruition. Here's to hoping though, I truly do hope this game sees some form of success and will be playing it at its launch. I want to give a huge thanks to everyone I've enjoyed this game with over the last week. You guys have been amazing, you've made it a really fun time. I love logging in and seeing all of you in global chat, queuing up for PvP and seeing both friends on my team and on the other team. I enjoy playing against and with you guys, even if we're just hanging out in town sitting around doing nothing. I'll miss you guys during the downtime, but I look forward to seeing you all in the next test, or at launch if there isn't one. Until next time, Wonders.